Celebrity, welcome everybody today. We're talking about leading in crisis. With us today is Elizabeth McCormick. And uh, we're gonna start off with just sharing a few leadership uh, principles uh, that I've uh, gathered over the years. Mm -hmm. And my name is Carlos Canejo. I'm a Lean Six Sigma specialist. So for those of you that don't know what that is, basically an efficiency expert. And I've worked on everything from the money in your pocket so that we, Bureau of Engraving and Printing prints perfect notes each time to Victoria's Secret, uh, Louis Vuitton purses, uh, you know, uh, the F-35 airplane. It doesn't matter. You know, uh, I, I worked on a lot of things over the past 23 years and I've had the um, uh, privilege of being a leader uh, during that time. Now, leader doesn't just necessarily mean that you're a boss. Leading, especially in today's, you know, uh, economy and unpredictable, uncertain times means, you know, again, acting in a certain behavior so that we're able to not only function and not only survive, but thrive to the next level. The first thing we want to talk about is the five leadership principles. And the first one is that, especially during uncertain times, we want to adapt or guess what? We're going to die. So we need to adapt. And as humans, we're highly adaptable creatures. You know, way back in the caveman days, you know, we were able to adapt because that tree standing still, it doesn't really create a threat, but that grass moving next to the tree, hmm. So I better adapt it and move over to the side because there might be some sort of animal there that again, might attack me. And so we have adapted even way back then. And so that's one of the things that we're very able to do. The next thing that a leader does during these times is inspire a shared vision. And vision during this time, you know, we're in this together. We're going to get out even better at the other, on the other side. Those are things that we can hold on to. And the inspiration part, especially with your folks that are working remotely, you got to keep a tab on them with regards to Again, giving them the love on a daily basis. It's not about really keeping the tab, but again, communicating with them, encouraging them several times a day. You know, even if you know that they're top, you know, your, 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 your gold standard folks, and especially them because you don't want to forget them at this time. The next leadership principle is enable others to act. And especially remotely, we want to be able to give people the resources, give them the help that they need, and as they say, get the hell out of the way. Because again, you don't want to have to worry about are they working or not? Just let them do their work. In fact, statistics show that people working at home are actually 30% more productive than working um, uh, at the place of business. Uh, the last one is model the way. Again, walk your talk. You know, respect people. Uh, none not of this command and control. You know, right now, people need a lot of love. Yes, they need direction, but be more of a coach. Be more of a of a you know side by side worker rather than you know a director. The last thing we want to talk about is uh, encourage the heart, and again that goes along with inspiration. And some of your folks, again because of their personality, actually need more of that, and they may be having issues working at home, and so they need a little bit more love than maybe some of the more independent ones. And think about this: even the animals encourage each other. If you talk about you know geese in a V formation. The reason why they do that is because they go not 10, not 20%, but 70% further by cooperating. The other thing is that they have roles and responsibilities. We have the head goose that's actually taking the impact of the wind. And every so often that goose will roll out and the next goose will come in. And what this does, it gives people a break. All right, and so the goose back at the far end of the V actually has less wind resistance, more aerodynamics. It's kind of like what I do when I go cycling with friends is, is we draft with each other and we take every one minute, somebody switches around so that people are not uh, working as hard to get through the wind. So there's my five leadership principles and hopefully those will help you out um, if you reach out uh, to me via LinkedIn or um, uh, through email, I will send these to you and uh, free of charge, uh, no, no problem with that. All right, so my pleasure folks to introduce our guest for today. And our guest has been on ABC, CBS, NBC, and has been featured 
in the Wall Street Journal. She is a number one best-selling author with more than 19 published books, and as she said, traveling the globe as a professional speaker. In 2011, Elizabeth was awarded the Congressional Veteran Commendation. She flew command and control, air assault, repelling, and top secret intelligence missions. She also transported high-level VIPs, including the Secretary of Defense. It is my pleasure to introduce motivational speaker and former U.S. Army Black Hawk helicopter pilot, Elizabeth McCormick. Hello. Hey, everyone. So we're going to go through leading in crisis and some frames, frameworks for that that'll help you through this time. And not just this time, because really the frameworks can apply to, to every time, just like the five tips that Carlos just gave. So thank you, Carlos, for having me. And uh, one of the things I'm, I'm really uh, excited about is I, I kind of encourage participation. So I'm going to give you two ways to do that. You can use the chat window, and I have the chat window open, and Curtis is going to be monitoring that as well. If you have questions, comments, and I'm going to ask questions throughout. But the other thing is, because sometimes you just want to participate, and I'm going to give you the option of you can also text on your phone. So if you text the number below, 972-861-0830, you can text. It's a Google voice number, and it'll come through on, on our, my phone also, so that way we can make sure your questions get answered. But here's the thing. It's more than just that, because I do prizes based on the chat and the text. So I actually scroll the chat wheel. So the chat wheel gets scrolled and we pick a name off the, off the chat. Now you only get to win one prize and this is the benefit of being live on, live on this webinar is that you get this uh, opportunity to win. So what I'm seeing here is, let's see, is anybody asking what are the prizes? Did anyone ask? I didn't see it in the chat. I'm looking at the chat. Is anybody else asking? Cause you know, any, anyone wanna know what the prizes are? <coughs> so re repeat the text number. It's uh, it's actually on. Let's see. We'll go here. Nine seven two. We'll put it here. Nine. Seven, thank you, Cynthia. Put it right in the chat box there. So some. Oh, so now we're asking what the prizes are. Rod, Kent, are asking. What, see, I knew somebody was. Asking. All right. So let's go. What the prizes are? Uh, anyone like Amazon right now? <laughs> if you're working from home, for sure, you're like an Amazon right now. So uh, we're going to give some Amazon gift cards, some $20 gift cards that'll let you electronically get sent to you if, I, if we call your name. And again, you have to be live on the drawing. And if you're not muted, if you would please make sure that you're muted as you join the call. Appreciate that. So uh, we got somebody on a phone. Maybe you could check on that, Carlos, to see if you can mute them and override them. Okay. All right, but you know, in the Amazon gift card, I think we need to do something more. What do you think, Carlos? Should we do something more? Let's do something more. Let's do something more. All right, so we're gonna also do my book, The Pilot Method. So five elemental truths to leading yourself at life. We'll pull it back so everybody can see the whole cover, yay. So you're also gonna get, um, aw, David. He said we like prizes, but are already rewarded by having you talking with us today. Aw, that's so sweet. <laughs> so Pilot Method is um, my book. It's five elemental truths to leading yourself in life because people follow, like what Carlos said earlier, uh, what they model, what they see. So um, this this book is, is my best-selling book. I've sold more than 35,000 copies. And I think we should do a first winner now. What do you think, Carlos? Sounds good. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna take the chat box, so whoever's in the chat right now, and I'm gonna just kind of scroll it up and down, 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 up and down. Oh, we got some more, pick Everybody, me, pick me. Wheel, me. Uh, fortune. <laughs> kind of, scroll, 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 and I'm gonna stop. And Desiree, I stopped on Desiree. So Desiree, you get the first prize. So Desiree, what we need, if you would private message um, to Carlos your email, and uh, we'll, from your email address, uh, it, send it to Carlos or Curtis, and we will make sure from your email we get your physical address for the book and the private address for Amazon. And don't worry, we're going to have more opportunities to win. Awesome. So, Let's give her a round of applause. Ready? Round yay. of applause. 
How fun is that, right? So we're going to do this all the way through. So keep participating in the chat. And I'm even going to do one from the Google Voice from the chat from, from over here. So I'll do one of the drawings from there too. So send your questions, send comments, and participate throughout this hour so that you have more opportunities to win. Yeah, that'll keep them awake. Yeah, exactly. So there's, a, there's my book there. So you can see that. Uh, we're going to give some away. So let's talk about crisis because I don't know about you, but anybody else feeling the crisis? I mean, it's if we're in a health crisis, uh, we're in an economic crisis. And I, I mean, before this is over, everyone, if they're not already impacted, will be feeling it. And I call this the cri a crisis zone, right? So we, I have all kinds of different zones. Um, you might've heard the danger zone before, I know Top Gun reboots coming out. I'm looking forward to that. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, but the crisis zone is, is a little bit different. It's, it's those high intensity times that we're in that, that where things just um, and aren't normal, right? So higher stress, higher pressure. And as a pilot, I was in those quite a few times. There were all three near crashes that I personally was in. Um, those are all longer stories. I'll, I'll uh, share maybe at the end if we have time. But uh, you know, they're just a time when things aren't normal. And so I call those the new normal, right? So uh, it, it becomes a time when when you have to kind of do things differently because the same results, the same things you've been doing aren't gonna get you the same results during this time. And that's what creates the crisis with this. So, um, you know, whether you're an essential personnel, like fortunately for me, my husband is an essential personnel because if he was home all day, woo, it'd be trouble. <laughs> so, but he's an essential personnel. So whether you're an essential personnel or you're working from home or you're in a complete state of uncertainty, and that's the thing most of us are in, is a complete state of uncertainty where we're, we're not sure, right? There's so many things that are unknown, whether we can, when we can go back to work and whether it's affected your, your health or a loved one's, a coworker, a friend. I have several, several friends and one family member um, in Michigan that, that are affected by, by COVID. Um, but the impact from this time is, is pretty significant. So right now, what I'd like to, like to go through and talk with you about is, when was the last time you experienced a crisis? It might have been a personal crisis. I don't need the details, trust me. But uh, whether it was, um, you know, some, we had some pretty big crisis going on. So right now, in the chat or by text, tell me, what, what were your crises? When was the last time? When was the time? Was it, um, you know, is it other than right now? Oh, Hurricane Harvey is a great example. Husband lost a job. Um, whether it was an economic crisis, 9-11, um, what I've got on the screen right now, was, was a, a crisis of confidence, right? We were, as a country, having that level of terrorism on our, our soil kind of, kind of rock the world. 2008, eight, a big economic crisis and also I think a little bit of a confidence crisis. The fires definitely uh, were a crisis. It could be personal. There are lots of things that cause crisis in our lives and our professional lives and as leaders. And the fact is when our personal life, <laughs> homeschooling six and eight year olds, oh yeah, that would do it. But in our personal lives, when things are not good in our personal lives, have you noticed how it also impacts our professional life? It, it affects, and, and what I find is when we're under stress or, or duress, we end up uh, reverting into like some more basic characteristics instead of our adaptive characteristics. So our basic characteristics are is our natural personality state of where we're at, and versus adaptive means we chill a little bit more, we take you know kind of keep more of other people's thoughts and feelings and emotional intelligence into account. And so we need to be aware of when we're feeling that way. When we're feeling that way, it, it's, it's easy to revert back to behaviors that don't always serve us professionally and as leaders. So we've got lots of examples here in the chat. A lot of, a lot, a lot of personal, there's a lot of personal in here, a lot of medical in there, um, in addition to what we're going through right now and here on the screen. I mean, so as I was doing this, my mother is staying with us. Um, she was already here when this crisis kind of happened and her, she's from Michigan, which right now Michigan is, an, is actually really bad because they're not paying attention to the social distancing and following, following a lot of the rules and laws. And uh, so she was, she was like, you got to add in here the energy crisis. 
And so um, I'm not going to say how old I was during that time, <laughs> but my mom really remembers it. <laughs> and some of you might remember that, um, that the energy crisis in the 70s, it, it, it impacted everyone then as well. The Cuban Missile Crisis, Rod, yes, absolutely. So there's all kinds of different crises that we, that we all go through. So in fact, it might feel like this anyone feeling like they're on the roller coaster right now your moods are going up and they're going down and you watch the news and it goes this way and you, you do this and it's like being in a roller coaster but the thing is i'm going to give you some six principles that are going to help you take the controls you're going to take the controls of that roller coaster because you can be in the pilot seat of of how you feel and, and your life and that emotional intelligence that we're, we're going to work on to get through those situations and help lead other people better. Because right now in crisis, especially in something like this, it's a global crisis. It's not just a personal crisis because this is affecting everyone. Everyone is feeling this way. Everyone is feeling this, this roller coaster of effect. And, and with that, Again, everyone kind of reverts back to those like basic needs and basic, basic moods and, and it, it reduces our effectiveness. Can you make sure your phone is muted or your computer, please? I appreciate that. So, so everybody else is feeling that, right? So let me ask you this. Have you ever had a bad leader in a situation in crisis at work, a crisis professionally, um, a crisis economically, or maybe they're having a health crisis or something happened. Ha have you ever seen some bad leadership? Right? I definitely have. So micromanagement. So go ahead and comment. What are some of those characteristics of the micro? What is that? What did that bad leader do that made you go in your head, you know, touchy subject. Yep. So it goes in your head and go, Oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. Right. So I, we're not talking politics. I know some, no, we're not going politics, but, uh, but we could go characteristics. Let's talk about people, right? Because it's all about people. If, if we're not leading well and connecting and, and that, so, but what, yeah, we've got some great ones here. A micromanagement, disconnection, Trevor, thank you for that. Lack of integrity, uh, intelligence, we're going to talk some more about that. Lack of clear vision, objectives, communication, not waiting for facts. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot, it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to find the, the bad things. Micromanagement is a big one, especially with remote workers. So, Carlos, you hit on that at the beginning. So, um, you know, the micromanagement makes people feel like they're not trusted and they're not valued and that, that yet you don't believe in them. So, so yeah, it's a really big thing. Um, lack of leadership. So lack of communication, lack of trust, making decisions based on the business over employees. Yeah, that's hard, right? We're going to talk a little bit more about that too. So uh, yeah, lots of, lots of ways. Let's see if there's anything. Oh, we got one on the chat. Um, so yeah, we've got some chat over here on the chat about, um, you know, the, the whole job crisis and people losing their jobs right now and forgetting that everyone's impacted personally. Absolutely. And we're going to, we're going to definitely hit on that now on the flip side, right? Cause we don't want to just focus on the bad. What are some things and some char characteristics of good leaders? We want to know the good leaders. So what is, so we're going to kind of draw the line here. I'm going to write good on here. So we know we, we're flipping to the good ones now, right? So I'm going to comment here in the chat. What are the good ones? What are the good, good leaderships characteristics that we look for in good leaders, right? Trust, focusing on the mission, compassionate, awareness, in this together mentality, great one, Rob. Ask and listen, encouragement and recognition, absolutely. Appreciation, authentic communication. Wow, we got a lot. Transparency, yep. Someone who asks questions, empowered teams, delegates well. Communication, both professionally and personally. Communication is a big one, right? Accepts blame, right? Takes responsibility, right? Would that work, Rod? Is flexible. Oh, flexible. Flexibility is really key right now. And Carlos, I know you hit it in the beginning when you talked about being adaptable and how fortunately as humans, we are adaptable, um, but it does require levels of, of awareness and awareness to be 
flexible and adaptable in situations. Assertive, not aggressive, active listening. These are all really great characteristics of good leaders. I think, anyone else have anything you wanna add here? Because I think it's time, there's the chat, for a prize. Yeah. We think our second right. winner. Anybody want a prize? Okay, we've got a lot of participation. This is great. We're gonna be doing this all the way all the way through. So see how much more fun this is as a virtual presentation to have have this level of questioning, engagement, and participation. To me, it's a to me it's a lot more fun to facilitate as well, instead of me just being a talking head to talk to you. So I don't want, I don't want that for you. I know I, I, it's hard to be on a one that's not that. So I'm going to, I'm going to wheel of fortunate, scroll the wheel here, or is it Price is Right that has the big one, right? The, that you do. I haven't watched much daytime TV. Um, Kent says, I need to give out prizes during our board Zoom meeting. Yes, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Right. Talking head is funny. It's bobblehead, right? So, okay. So I'm going to scroll the wheel Uh-oh. here. Yeah, you know what? I, I will tell you, um, as, a, as a motivational speaker, as a speaker, content, thought leader, you know, as we go through this, it's really, um, you know, it's hard to keep energy going and, and active participation and everything. So, you know, you absolutely anything you learn from, from this webinar or any other webinars you do, you want to make sure that you're pulling those best practices in and helping you be better during this time of remote learning and virtual training and virtual meetings, okay? So let's scroll here. We've got a, oh, uh, let's see. And I have got Trevor. All right, Trevor. Ooh, a round Trevor, of applause. round of applause. You know. So make sure you send your email in. You can do that by private message. So we have that for the second prize. So. I don't know where to find him. You know, okay, good. All right, we'll find you. So um, let's see, what was, what was my call sign? My call sign was Mac, because um, I like the Irish boys. But uh, <laughs> it was my first husband's name then. But um, it was Mac. And if you wanted to buy a copy, if you don't end up winning one, you could go to pilotmethod.com to get an autographed copy. Nice. So really easy, just like the cover, pilotmethod.com. Mad Mac, no, not mad, no, no. That's, that's, that's a different one. <laughs> All right, so let's continue here because um, so really, you know, it, what happens under pressure, under, in crisis is we're under pressure, right? And it's kind of like a, a, the chunk of carbon that under pressure becomes a diamond. Because what happens is strength is that, that pressure creates strength. And it builds strength and we all need that and we need that strength as leaders uh, every situation you have been to every single crisis you have been through in the past has built who you are today uh, and and that that forging of that strength doesn't happen by accident it really doesn't everything you've done gets you to where you need to be to deal with something today i really truly believe that and some of us have dealt with a lot. Um, you know, I, for me, I felt like my, the entire eight years I served in the military was like a soap opera. I mean, people would come up to me and be like, what are you going through? Because it makes my life look better. And I'm like, really? You know, really? But everything I went through, what would I be talking about now? You know, I did eight years in military, eight years in corporate America as a manager and leader, uh, international contract negotiator. And, and then I've now had 10 years of speaking. I just aged myself really bad, Carlos. So, uh, <laughs> but after all this time, you know, everything I've done has helped me get to the next p- next piece and to the next piece. And, it, and it's a building block and foundation for us. So, you know, I, I, I want you to think about that. And as a leader, I want you to look at, are we reacting or are we proacting? Because what happens is, again, under stress and duress and crisis, we become that, that gut check and we go into reactionary mode. And the fact is, in reactionary mode, it does not serve anyone. It doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve your organization. It doesn't serve your people. It doesn't serve anything. So you have to make the decision and be conscious of, am I reacting or am I proacting? And so that's the question I want you to ask. Are you reacting or are you proacting, right? Are you making the, making the decisions based on, on consciousness and thought and awareness, or are you making decisions based on what you need to do in the moment? Now, don't get me wrong, because there are definitely emergencies and situations where you have to make situations and make decisions quickly. 
but we're going to talk a little bit deeper about how can we stay as a proactive leader. So um, you let the problem affect you or you affect the problem is what Carlos just sent to me by message. So absolutely, absolutely. We have to decide how we're going to handle things. And, abs and there are things that we have to handle uh, with that gut check and our instincts. And that's where our experience comes in and it factors and it flavors and it helps us determine what we, how we handle things. But there's also the bad thing on that. The bad thing on that is that experience can also flavor and factor things in a bad way. So absolutely. So let's go into that a little bit deeper. So I have six characteristics of proactive leaders. Would that be helpful to learn six characteristics? This is a good chat opportunity for you. So would six characteristics help you to focus on? All right. So I've got them on the screen here. And so as I'm going through, we're going to go deeper into this. And as we go through, I want you to, t to, to, um, You've got a message there, Carlos, for, for you. So I want you to chat or text me which, which you think is the most important. Now, don't forget, you want to also do one of the drawings is going to be based on, based on the uh, Google Voice. So make sure you're sent, you're, you can also do that during the, on the Google Voice number if you want to text instead of chat. Okay. So proactive leaders are vested in their organization. So they are vested in their organization. So the organization vests them and they vest back. So it creates this, this uh, you know, kind of like a, a flak vest in the military that we had that creates a bulletproof vest, right? So you're vested in what's going on. And it works two ways. The organization trusts them, but they also you go back to that. So take a look at these and chat, chat or text which one is the most important. I'm not going to read it because y'all can read it, but, uh, but I will tell you, we're going to go through each one individually as well. So it continue as I'm going through. I want to see in the chat which one you think is the most important right now in crisis. Okay, so let's go through them. So the first one is being visible. Oh, being visible is so important right now. And, it, and the thing is, as leaders, it's actually probably the hardest one, I think, right now, because we're working remotely for the most part, right? So if you're working remotely, being visible is really hard to do. So how does being visible show up in a remote, remote work, workforce? So being visible would be, um, it's not just a matter of being visible, it's being available, it's being available, knowing that somebody can pick up the phone. So maybe it's as simple as saying, hey, any problem, anytime you can chat me. Exactly, Rob, being accessible, being accessible and available to your workforce, to the, to the people that you lead in your organization is so key right now because there's so much uncertainty and so many people, whether they're working from home or even if they are out in their essential workforce and they're out, they're still dealing with the uncertainty of, could I catch, could I catch this? Could I give this to someone I love and not even know it? It's creating a lot of fear and everything. And people people need to know that you are available for them. So being visible can show up online. Being visible can show up by being, hey, I'm gonna be on Zoom. If you need anything or wanna to talk to anything, uh, talk to me. So I'm gonna be on Zoom for this hour, even if you're by yourself, open a line. Have that open communication where somebody can tap in if they need you. So being visible, sending out, uh, I always say that that email is for information, but picking up the phone, being on a video chat is for communication. So don't rely heavily on email. Email is so, it's so easy for things to get misconstrued and the energy and the intent behind what you say to be misconstrued. So right now I think there's a big tendency to kind of hide back in the email when you're remote, especially if you're remote working. But right now is the time when you really need to, as a leader, is kind of show up and say, hey, I'm here for you. Hey, let's jump on a phone. Let's, you know, text. Let's get into a different mode of communication that allows you to, to be um, visible to them. Because as, as a leader, they need to see you leading. They need to see that you're there for them, and which ties right into the second one. And I love that how these two tie together. Mm -hmm. And I saw a couple, several of you mention this, and when you talked about good and bad leaders and characteristics, is being empathetic. So the thing is, 
leaders need to, proactive leaders need to have that empathy and know that people care about them because people don't care about you as a leader until they know that you care about them. It starts with how you show up as a leader saying, I get you, I understand you, I know things are hard. You know, how can I help you? What can I do? How can I be a part? You know, we've got, I will tell you, I don't know how some families do it when they have, um, I know my, my son, my youngest is 15. So he is having to do hours of homeschooling, online schooling and homework every single day. And for some of those classes and a lot of it's just getting sent and they're not getting the actual instruction. So it's really hard. I don't know how, if you're working full time and working from home and having to make these, you know, have to having to homeschool and help your children. If you have young children, you know, there, it's a challenging time for people. So we need to have a lot of empathy with our workforce right now and with people that we lead or even coworkers and with each other, because no one's coming into this or at least rarely, are they coming into this from a place of misintent, right? No one's coming into this saying, I'm going to take advantage of this time. I really believe that we have to trust our workforce and that our, and our people that know that they just really want the best and they're doing the best they can in the situation they have. So there's a phrase, um, my daughter's in graduate school right now for to be a public health administration um, and fortunately has a job right away that she's going into when she graduates. But I always tell her, I said, people give the most they can in the situation they're in. You can't expect someone to give you 100% when their education and their experience has only given them an 85% cup. You just really have to be put yourself in their place. Not everyone comes from the same level of in emotional intelligence and, and, um, you know, and even empathy levels, it all kind of varies. So which, you know, how can you better show that you're empathetic? Let me see in the chat. What are some ways that right now that you can share with people how they could be more empathetic or how you could show up more empathetic in, in your life? Crisis management with people in a foreign culture. Oh, great question, Urbez. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, listen carefully, seek first to understand. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I lived in Germany for a while um, in the 90s. And, uh, you know, I think, I think people are people. And I think although there's cultural difference, I still think people are people. And the, the, six, the six characteristics I'm going through here of proactive leaders, they apply, they apply to any culture to any culture. So Elizabeth, some of the folks um, react or show the processing part differently. I know in the Latino culture, you know, we, we hand gestures and screaming and, you know, it seems like we're, <laughs> we're like, like we're mad, like we're crazy, you know, but that's part of the process, the catharsis that we have to go through to problem solve. And so the basic needs, as you say, we still have, but the demonstrative and if we're not from that culture, we kind of get taken aback. <laughs> and so again, realize again that people process the situation differently and just start asking questions. And that helps out to, you know, get the people to calm down and, you know, everybody to come to consensus together and synergize as a group. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing with that, with other cultures, I found this, um, I had, when I was a contract negotiator and one of my biggest clients was in Lyon, France, and I would, I would travel to Japan and I traveled to France and Sweden and different countries. And when I did the one, the first time I had to go to Lyon and negotiate, I noticed that when there was a point they really, really, really needed, like it was really important to them, he would slam the desk and he would, whoo, and he'd get like this. And, <laughs> and I, I paid attention to that, right? And this awareness and paying, listening and paying attention. And I paid attention to that. And this was my first experience with them. Well, then, you know, two years later, we're into the next negotiation contract. And I had one point, I really, my boss was like, you cannot give anything on this one point of this contract. And they were pushing back. So what did I do? I mirrored that language, mirrored that. And I remembered it from, I had notes. I take notes with my meetings like that. And I slammed the desk and I, <laughs> da -da 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 -da. and it was funny because this one meeting was in the U.S. and all my office staff out there were like, she's mad oh she's mad and so I'm slamming the desk and I'm getting really loud with them and they backed right off 
because I'd mirrored their language. So a really big thing you can do culturally with this is, and especially with empathy, is to see how, how are they expressing empathy and make sure you're using, you know, whether it's their words or their body language or, or things and making sure you're meeting people where they are. Right. So I think somebody, I saw the golden rules, treat people the way you want to be treated. And I think we could go a step better than that and treat people the way they want to be treated. And that really comes into personality and, and again, and their personalities are shaped by their experiences and other crises they've been through and how they've handled things. So you can work with them. And we've got some great examples in the, in the chat here of, of ways to be empathetic. So, but it's a really important one because if you don't come from a place of caring and a place of sharing and you know i saw earlier in the bad character characteristics of bad leaders when we talked about earlier in the chat is that they said you know someone who makes decisions based on only business and not about people and that's a really fine line in business right now because right we have to consider the profit and the business and the business side of things but it's also we also need to consider the people side of things and that's where the empathy shows up and so if you come into those business decisions from with some empathy and communicate them with that with that they're going to be more likely to want to be on board and share your vision when it comes to that are we ready for the next one Excellent. Oh, I saw a lot of you when I asked you for the most important one, you said solicit data. So this one is really a key one. And I'm going to add in here, <clears throat> solicit data from credible sources, please. Credible sources. It is so important that we're in cr on credible sources with that. Um, I know Anybody else, I'm just, I'm, I don't get political. It's not who I am, but is anybody else really tired of how everything's become political? If you're tired of it, just say, I'm tired of it in the chat. I want to, I want to see tired of it. I, I, you know what? I have a saying that I use, um, especially during the election periods, and especially as a military and a military veterans. Oh my gosh. I have a saying that is patriotism before politics right? It should be about people in our country before politics. That's yes. all I'm going to say about Absolutely. politics on this. But look at, look at where you're getting your news sources from. I, I will tell you, reading, reading the news is better. And, and I even look at where, I'm, where we're reading the news from. I find that the international news sources are more unbiased. So I might get my news from BBC or Sky News or even Al Jazeera. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty, you know, even from Al Jazeera, it's, it's more biased. Um, it's amazing um, how you get just the facts, right? BBC, yeah, BBC is good. And so, you know, go to, go to news sources, other news sources where you're gonna get facts and not opinion. I don't know what happened, um, what happened to, our news system where we suddenly um we suddenly became it's all sensationalized and opinionated instead of just telling us what we what we need to know i mean it's really yeah it's become entertainment and soap opera and sensationalism <laughs> so look for sources that can help you you know look at things in a credible way and the other thing is is turn turn it off i mean get get a little bit of briefing, but turn it off the rest of the day. Because what happens is if we're constantly bringing in new sources, of course the news <laughs> is focused on the sensationalism and the negativity because it gets rating, ratings, but turn, up, turn it on for a little bit of time, get what you need and then turn it off. Start bringing things in through your own filter of, of experience and education and empathy so that you can help bring things in a better way and, and, and help turn, your, turn everyone else around. Because you definitely want to be educated during this time. Yeah, you can also use standard, standardized processes like Carlos teaches, right, to help you get through in these processes. That's so cool. absolutely, credible sources. Solicit data. So always be cautious of where you're getting. And for me, I always, if I hear something on one side, I could flip to the other channel. I want to hear it from the other side too, because I want to be able to make my own decisions and I want to be able to have those conversations in a credible way as well. So if you're going to lead, you got to have good data, right? To help you get through. All right. 
We ready for some more? This is one of my favorite ones. I could do a whole hour just on thinking strategically. It's one of my favorite things. So thinking strategically, looking for my sheet here. Here we go. Thinking strategically is so important. And that, that's where the empathy kind of butts up against the strategy, right? And they kind of butt up against each other because they don't always serve the same purpose. But when you use your empathy in that and as you think, but here's what happens with thinking strategically is right now we're so inundated. We're so inundated with news and noise and radio and music and, and webinars. This one's a good one though, I'm just gonna say. So webinars, but you gotta turn it off. Give yourself some time. If you're not at least having an hour of thinking time in your calendar, where you're thinking strategically about what's going on and, and thinking about how you're gonna handle things next. The fact is if you're not thinking forward, you're already behind. You're already behind. You've gotta, as a leader, it's our responsibility to think forward and thinking that in a strategy kind of way. And so for me, I'm always thinking, okay, if I do this, then this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens and I don't like this, so I'm gonna go back. Okay, then, so if I change this here, so if I do this, then I do this, then I do this, and I do this. So how are you thinking strategically during this time? Again, it's pro being proactive, not reactive. And if you're not creating contingency plans as a leader, you're, getting, you're gonna end up getting left behind. So whether it's, you know, reputation management, whether it's actual proactive, whether it's labor force, whether it's, you know, this, if this happens, this happens, right? So what can you do that's more, more strategic and proactive right now in your thinking that you haven't done before? So looking at things further out long-term, right? So we tend to, as reactive leaders, work on what's happening right now. That's all I do. This is what's happening right now. I, this is what I got to do. But they might not think about it. What down the road? What is that going to look like in one year, three years, 10 years further down the road? For me, I would look at everything through a 10, 15, 20 year plan and then backdate it. Where do I need to be right now to get to that, that result? And even though things have changed with the crisis, right? Things have changed with the crisis. Everything's through that lens, that filter of what happened, where I want to be in 10, 15, 20 years, depending on, uh, depending on the company, my company. So for me, I'm on a 20 year plan. So, but everything, looking at things right now, this week, next month, this quarter is too short in. We don't give enough time to really determine results and really monitor. And we need to monitor and measure, but Give, give some time. And right now, especially, decisions we make now in this crisis, this is the time to be positioned for when it's over. Because there is an end. That's the one thing all crises have in common is they don't last forever. They don't. They might have an impact, right? I'm sure we're going to be shaking hands differently when this is over, right? There's going to be, I think, virtual training is going to come in more. We're going to start doing more things virtual and maybe a little bit less travel or meetings from this, especially in the immediate aftermath. But everything can come through that lens of strategy. What is one thing I want to know in the chat? What is one thing that you could do, be more strategic about right now that you can control and affect? So we're having this issue uh, Irves, uh, we're having this issue with students at the business school. I organize workshops, swamp by messages from social media, have a hard time sorting. Exactly. So especially the younger generation, they want to be, they want the instant uh, gratification of all the news sources all at once, but turning it off. Like, okay, let's take an hour. No, no phones, turn it off. Let's think, let's talk. If we're not allowing that time and that space to do that, um, they're not able to filter and sort that information out to make, to be productive. All right, ready for the next one? Effective decision-making. Oh, effective decision-making. Let me tell you, if, if proactive leaders make better decisions, because again, goes right back to the last thing we were talking about. See how they lead together like that? So the last thing we're talking about, right? It takes more time. They think longer. They're making better decisions for not just their profits, but for their people. Because the profits and the people work together. When the people know that you're invested in them as well as the profits, they're going to work harder. They're going to be more loyal. They're going to be more invested in your organization. 
So, but effective decision making is really key. So, and again, that goes into that longer thinking. These two kind of overlap like that. And looking at the looking at the bigger picture and taking that time to bring all that right, solicited data from credible sources to be able to think strategically to make the decision. See how they all kind of work together like that. I did that on purpose, by the way. All right. And the last one is delegate productively. Delegate productively. Um, right now in the chat, Cesar, Cesar, is that how you say it? Caesar, Cesar, Cesar, I bet. Often following your gut feelings is better than over analysis. Absolutely. There's a real tendency to get into that paralysis of analysis where we're, we're over analyzing and because of that we don't make any decisions. So you do as a leader, you have to know when, okay, wait, we just, we're just going to do this. We're just going to do this. And like Trevor just said, being willing to fail fast. So if you're not taking risks, no one else is taking risks. And, and if you're not taking risks, you're also not being innovative. You're not getting out of your, I call that also, we talked about the, um, the zone, right? The crisis zone in my speeches, my regular motivational speeches, I talk about being in the potential zone. The potential zone is where you push out of comfort zones and into doing new things. And so, yeah, but gut, your gut feeling is usually based on your experiences that you're in. Your experiences filter everything and create that instinct where you kind of know what the right thing to do. And I will tell you, typically that gut, that instinct is not leading you wrong. It's your body telling you something that you need to listen to. And waiting for perfection to act is, is definitely not serving. But so this goes into the micromanagement, a few of you said as a bad characteristic of, for a leader, right? Is delegating productively. How do you delegate productively? So the first thing is, as a leader, especially in a crisis, the tendency is I got to do everything. I got to be, I'm the boss. I got to do everything. I have you, uh, you know, I've got to, I've got to do everything. And the fact is, as a leader, um, it actually sets us up for failure. And it shows that your team that you don't trust them. So delegating is really, really key. And I'm going to go right back to point number one, being visible. They need to see that you're delegating. They need to see that you're delegating and being visible in that delegation. Okay, so delegate productively. When I delegate, and whether it was in the military, whether it was in uh, corporate America, when I delegate, and now I'm a business owner, so when I delegate, I always delegate with a deadline. So it's my D&D. &D. So if you're going to delegate, you've got to give them a deadline. Some people are pressure players, right? Some people are pressure players and they want to, they're going to get it done, but it might be at the last minute. And then other people like to kind of, you know, slow and steady gets the course. So micromanagement is where you go in and you're telling them how to do it and you're micromanaging the process that they need to go through. Give them a deadline, let them know the deadline's firm and work with them on that. Trust them. Rely on your team for their advice. You, you, you hired them for that reason. So I'm getting lots of great comments in the chat. How do you respond to people who say uh, you as a leader put them all in this situation? Well, really, you know, really, is that, is it you as a leader that put them in the situation or, or is there's no environmental factors? There's no anything else. So the fact is the, you as a leader put them in that situation is a blame. And right now blaming isn't going to help anything, right? Let's focus on the situation we're in and how to get out of the situation instead of how we got to the situation. Because what's happened in the past, you can't fix, right? You cannot fix anything that's happened in the past. We can only move from right here today and move forward. So keeping a focus, keeping their focus forward is what's going to help you in those situations. Um, yeah, Danielle saying being, be okay to delegate when you know they might not do exactly the way you do. Absolutely. There are lots of things I have a certain way of doing, but I've had to learn to let go and say, okay, you know what, as long as the results come in, it doesn't matter how it gets done and and picking your battles right so absolutely okay so we went through them now now after we've gone through these are you still firm on which one is your most important or maybe have you thought about it a little differently so i'm curious as to what you got there because while you're chatting there guess what it's time for dun 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 our third winner our third winner of the pilot method book and that and so this one 
I think I have this one earmarked as a text. So we have a few people that have text. Don't worry, we're gonna have one more. Stay to the end. We're gonna have one more after this. All right, so we've gotten a few people that are texting. So I'm scrolling right here on my phone. I'm kind of scrolling up and down on my phone and we're gonna pick one and I'm gonna give the last four numbers of the phone number and then text me. Oh gosh, we've got a few of them here. All right. Oh, oh fortune. Mm, let's see, let's see. Oh, it's not the other email that came through. Let's see, okay. If your phone number ends in 6714, Send me your email because you won the yeah, book and a, a book and a gift card. All right. Oh, there you go. All right, yay! Congratulations, Cynthia. Cynthia, good job. I can. I'm gonna write it down. All right, yay! So we're gonna do that. Okay. So some of them are all of them actually are yeah absolutely six way tie excellent um, empathy I, yeah empathy is a really good one I, have you ever worked with a leader that's cold that's not empathetic you don't really it's they're hard to um, to work for thinking strategically Jean absolutely so, absolutely okay so Pratt, wrapping this up whoops wrapping this up that proactive leaders are emotionally strong so that comes into that empathy right emotionally strong and they're steadfast they are steady they're the rock in the storm right and that's what we really are working towards is how can you be more emotionally strong so if you just do the vested right if you just do those six things as a leader in a crisis and when you're not in crisis all your leadership rises all your leadership rises during that time and because when we're emotionally strong we're also resilient People, and Carlos, you said at the beginning, they want to model, right? They want to see if as a leader, if our leader is panicking, what's going to happen to everyone else in the organization? Everyone else is going to panic. So they want to see that you're resilient, that you're, okay, you know, let's focus on the positive. Let's see what we can do. Be great. great. You know what? I'm grateful we have this. What, those are some things that you can do in resilience. In fact, I have a whole bunch of things on confidence and resilience and emotional strength that I'm going to share with you. Um, so I'm going to share it with you because, uh, I don't have time to do it here though. So we're going to get into, I'm going to give you a free, a free, uh, resource. Would you, anybody like free? So, and the second part steadfast. And then David, I've got a, a message from you. I'm going to respond to. So steadfast. So staying the course, staying with the mission, staying focused, Focus is hard. Right now, we've got a lot of things going on. We've got a lot of distraction. I mean, it's distractions are kind of like this, right? And if you're working from home, if you're working from home, yeah, chat right now and text right now what has distracted. What's been distracting to you right now? Because I don't know about you, but anybody's home looking like this. <laughs> the, the kids want to help you with your work, yeah. right? Um, a spouse, yeah, I'm glad mine's working because... Uh, you know, or maybe you're trying to get work done and everyone else is pulling you for your attention, a call yeah. for a client. You know, one thing that our Olympian guest uh, at the last webinar suggested is break up your day into hour and a half segments. And then at the end of uh, an hour and a half, and so you can focus on your you know projects at that time, at the end of hour and a half, then do like a half hour with the family, read a book, right. uh, have coffee, have lunch together. And then that way, you know, your wife or, or, or spouse or kids now, now that they understand, okay, I can look forward to dad or mom in 90 minutes. Right. So, so yeah, chunking your time, you call that chunking your time. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I will tell you right now, and it comes back to being emo that emotional strength, is forgive yourself. Mm, yeah. Days aren't going to go the way you think they should go. <laughs> Things aren't going to happen the way you think sh should happen. I think, uh, you know, let go of the guilt. Because the fact tomorrow. is, this is unprecedented, right? What we're going through as a country, what we're going through as people, um, what you're going through, I mean, and I don't mean our, just our country, but any country, what we're going through as a, as a global pandemic, this has never happened like this. I mean, Spanish flu, but we didn't have technology. We didn't have, I mean, everything is different. So give yourself some grace. Be kind to yourself. Forgive yourself. Take care of yourself in those situations. Because if you're not taking care of you, nobody else is gonna take care of you. 
And you're setting the example for your family if you're working from home. Yeah. You're setting the example as a leader for your workforce. So again, how you can't be resilient if you're, if you're depleted. Yeah, my wife, uh, a long time ago, because I've been working from home for 23 years, told me, remember, it's a home first, it's an office second. Mm -hmm. So like I have, this is my office. And when the door is shut, I am working and I'm not disturbed. But when the door is open, it means it's okay. You can come in. So, but you, you can all do that. But yeah, the guilt, the guilt doesn't help. The guilt serves you. And what happens is I talk about this, it becomes this like swirling of negativity that just keeps you go down. It just keeps you just swirling in. So um, yeah. All right. So because the fact is, and I talk about this, is that you're in the pilot seat. You decide your moods. You decide how, what you react to. You decide what you proact to. You decide each one of those six of the vested. You decide because you're in the pilot seat and there's no autopilot, especially in leadership, especially in life, especially with your family, your children, you're working from home, everything that you do, there's no autopilot in this. You're on the controls with no autopilot. So, you know, you got to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to handle things. And hopefully that the vested being visible, empathetic, soliciting data from credible sources, thinking strategically, um, effective decision making and delegating productivity. Hopefully that is a filter. Those are the things you should be focused on right now. And everything should kind of wrap in and, and, and come from within that to help you lead others better. So the gift, everyone want the gift? Okay, we're wrapping up. Here's the gift. This is, a, I have a course. Um, it started off as a mini course. I was going to do three videos. It ended up being 12. <laughs> so 12, five to eight minutes short videos in an online course all about motivation. How you can, how you can be more motivated, how, what can help tap into that, but also how you can instill more motivation in your workforce. So it's gonna help you with all of that. They're all short lessons, 12 videos. And if you go to soaryourlife.com, the coupon code is Carlos. It's already embedded in that, in that link. So um, it's really easy. Soaryourlife.com will forward you right to it. Now here's the deal. It doesn't launch until Monday. So go ahead and get in there, get into it now. And on Monday, you'll receive an email and you'll get your uh, pass, you know, your access into the thing when it launches on Monday before, so you'll be the first ones in. How's that? Anyone like that? Awesome. I, yay, and I think we have time for one last prize from the chat. All right, awesome. And then I'll go back to that slide, okay? So let's go back to this slide. Soar your life, easy, easy, easy. All right, last prize, must be present to win. Let's see, and what make sure. While you're doing the prize, Elizabeth, let's just yeah. give Elizabeth a round of applause, everybody. You know, thank you so much for being today's guest. You know, I got a lot of it and I hope that it was interesting and informative for those that joined us today as well. The, the, the prizes, that was like the icing on the cake. So we appreciate that. that. That's terrific. Uh, Curtis, Crispin, thank you for being our co-pilot today. And um, folks, both Elizabeth and I are available for speaking engagements, for uh, virtual trainings. Um, a new tool that I have in my cadre uh, this year is now I'm a certified partner with Predictive Index, so we can use scientific tools mm -hmm. to help you with your talent optimization. And it's, it is software rocks. So um, that's all I want to say. And I, again, thank you all. And we appreciate the extra time that you have given us. It's been a privilege and an honor. Elizabeth. All right. And Rod Harris. Rod Harris, you are our fourth winner. Rod Harris, Ooh. round of applause. Yay, Rod. So make sure we get have your email or if Carlos doesn't already have it, and we'll make sure you have that. So it's a pleasure to be here. Um, you know, glad to help. I have more um, military stories and things in the motivational course. So you'll be able to see that and get that because I hope you all take it. And here's the deal. This link you can share, you can give out. It's it's this is a, a gift. Right now we need more motivational. Um, need more motivation in our lives and we need to help instill motivation in other people's lives. So soaryourlife.com, feel free to share that out um, socially. Again, it doesn't launch till Monday. So if you're on the recording, it's probably already launched. So thank you so much. Have a good weekend, everybody. Stay safe. Stay safe, be well.
Awesome. Awesome, Elizabeth. We 